Welcome to Magic Canningstart. I'm Dan. After last week's success with the Swiss drafts for Magic Origins, I am going to play it again. And uh, I've been told then that uh, you don't actually get eliminated in turn one, unlike the 4 3 2 2 drafts that existed before. I'm, I'm not sure that is the case yet, but I will be very happy if I lose the first round. And uh, if I'm then still in the tournament, that would be awesome. And it's time to do some drafting. Kidion's Irregulars is of course a super good card. And committing to white this early is bad, but I think it's a pretty obvious take. So I'm gonna first pick Irregulars. Because they just rule the world. And I'm gonna try to force white again, uh, given the success I had with it last time. Core Castellan is he is uh, pretty bad to s ah no, I'm just taking it. What else is here? Not much. Brute flare, a disciple. <laughs> okay, well, my deck seems to be building itself here. Uh, suppression bonds or patron of the valiant. I think it still has to be the bomb. Or is it suppression bonds? I'm actually not sure here. I'm gonna look at Frank Karsten's origin pick order. Because I am not sure here. Nightly Valor is above both of these. Patron is first. So I am just white. Uh, sending Grasp, well, not too bad. Sending Suppression Bonds, really bad. I get the Stalwart Avon for my white deck. And I think I'm just gonna stay white. And I'm gonna pick anything white here. Uh, just cut it hard so I get enough white cards in deck 2 to stay white. And um, Somberwald Alpha is probably better than Stalwart Avon. Uh, not much else though, so... <sighs> Heavy Infantry isn't something I want to play. I'm not... That happy about Angel's Tomb. Foundry of the Councils I heard a lot about. Uh, in the very early stages of Origins Draft. And I think it is the card here. And I'm willing to give up. Uh, Mighty Leap. There's a massacre. Yeah, I don't like Angel's Tomb. Uh, Hallowed Moonlight, is that worth anything? No, not enough to register. Uh, I'm just taking the Amprint Tactician here. Definitely need more cheaper cards. But I'm gonna stay white. And I'm soon gonna consider Guardian of Melody as a card. Uh, definitely need cheaper cards. There is the Guardian of Melodies, but now it's time to think about the second color, and there's just nothing here. This is just nothing. And I don't want a six drop. So what about the Guardian? I think that's overvaluing my cards. I still need cheap cards. And where am I gonna get them? Probably not in blue. I have the basis of a blue-white flyers deck, but that's not the big thing in Origins. I think I'm still gonna pick Disperse here, or even Turn to Frog. Yeah, Turn to Frog is the better card. But I, I don't really want to be blue. I want to be any other color but blue, I think. Oh, perhaps not black. Definitely want the Renown guys. And red or green is the prime choices for the secondary color. But now I've been cutting white pretty hard. So I expect my Topan Free Blades in pack 2. A man can dream, can't he? This is taking a long time. Ah. 
I get enshrouding mist. And I think that's my pick here. There is no good cheap creature in another color. And enshrouding mist is definitely a good card. But now like the, the white priest or something like that. Very good at this point. We get another Enshrouding Mist, but here we have some choices. We have the Eye Blight Assassin, the Maturing Bully, who is a 2 2 that does stuff. I don't want to be stuck with uh, combat tricks. I'm going to take the Maturing Bully as it is a 2 drop. Hoping that my secondary color can actually be red. That would be sweet. Flare wield. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty easy choice here. Uh, sidearm is borderline playable. None of the other cards are. I don't really like sidearm, but I'm gonna pick it here. Hoping that I get to cut it. If I see a cheap green card here, I am probably going to take it. Cause I think one mistake I made last time was not going white green, but I got all those sweet red removal spells. I think I have to take Enshrouding Mist here. But we are definitely in need of two drops. I can see a horrible situation where I actually have to play the heavy infantry. But I really don't want to. Because it's not a good card. And as always, we need two drops. Need two drops so bad. I'm not gonna play that card. So hopefully the white strategy pays off now, having cut nine white cards. And then we don't really have to make the hard choice until later. And I'm now still flexible to go any other color as my second color. Wow. Okay, the white cards are mediocre. The red cards are awesome. Chandra's ignition is very high. So we're just gonna pick Chandra's ignition here, clear the board, and it's just another five drop. Forcing us into red as well. Swift Reckoning feels better than the Knight. And better than the Maturing Bully. It's kind of two drop, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's a pretty, pretty easy pick here. I'll hammer its archive. No, it's not worth anything. Ram Roller. Void Mage, Sergeant, Enlightened Skeptic. I think it is the Sergeant. And that we are now pretty committed to red. The white cards just are not good enough. Battlefield Forge. Le worth less than 50 cents. 
Warhorn, Kydion's Tactics, Bloodlust, Titan Strength. There are no creatures in this pack. And of course the Battlefield Forge will help us. I am inclined to take it. There is really no real no good pick here for us. Titan Strength. But yeah, I think I prefer the dual land. That horrible card, Yoked Ox. There is nothing in uh, in red either. I think I'm taking the ox here, helping me get my bombs into play. Because I my deck is not fast, not fast at all. And I think I'm fairly locked in my colors now. A crow and jailer, Griffin, Fury. Maturing Network, Vile. Well, these cards are not exciting. Griffin doesn't do what I want it to do. And Jailer is just bad. Fury is a sideboard card. I think it's Griffin. Wow. I'm gonna take the Guardian Automaton here, allowing me to recover. I'm way too expensive. I still think it's the pick though. Another heavy infantry. Chandra's Fury of Pickable. Lanor Waste is a ticket. And I'm fairly sure I'm not playing any of those cards. Prickleboard doesn't do what I want it to do. Already have too many expensive cards. So I'm gonna pick Lanor Ways for money. There are no sheep cards in any color here. I'm gonna take the Shambling Gold for an emergency black. This is sort of turning into control deck. That's horrible. There is a Ring Warden Owl, but at this point I don't feel that I can give up red. Or can I? It's a fi another 5 drop. Taking the Healing Hands. Taking the Archive for money. <laughs> What's this? It's nothing. I'm not going to play any of these cards. Yeah, and I guess Bellows Lizard could be played in a horrible situation. A yoked ox and Bellows Lizard looking to cut them. Definitely some cuts that needs to be done here. Okay, let's open a Jace now and nothing else matters from that point on. I, I might be tainted by my strategy from uh, last week. There is a free blade. There is a Consul's Lieutenant. He's better than the free blade, I think. Especially in this have heavy white deck. Smash the Smithereen, Maddler. Definitely uh, the lieutenant. Mono white control, that's what we are building. We get a suppression bond. I think that's better than anything in red here. Twelve creatures, people. That's not going to work. Bellows, Lizard and Yoke Talks will hold down the ground. I get a top and free blade. There is a Nissa's revelation. 
uh, Vial, but it's just Topan Freeblade here. That's super good for my deck. That's exactly what I want. Anointer! Look at that. Definitely taking Anointer over Stalwart Haven. And a Crow and Sergeant. I'm just, I just brought them out of white red, I think. Very nice. Something else. Valoran Wardens, way too late. Sword of the Animist. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna play that. In my super slow deck. Mana fixing is tempting actually, but yeah, the sword, the sidearm goes away. 23 playables. There is another Celestial Flare. There is also Skyraker Giant. But he's double red. And I think we will have a hard time supporting double red. So I'm just taking the flare. There's the famous choice of the empty Aura Mancer. Still a better card than uh, Bellows Lizard or Yoke Dox. So I'm gonna take it here. And wow, they really want me to play Aura Mancers. I have one Suppression Bond to get back, but I think Grey Ogres are better than Yoke Dox and Bellows Lizard still. Uh, I talked about Garden of Melitis, but I will stay away from that. It cannot win the game. Fettered Imp is, of course, a really good card here. But I am taking Smash for my sideboard. And no late... I saw a lot of Undead Servants this time. I'm not gonna play anything of this. Uh, I'm gonna hate the Stratus Walk. Maturing Bully really doesn't fit into my deck. Uh, Battle Priest kind of does, but he's way too expensive. I'm just gonna hate the Eye Blight. I have plenty of white removal, but no red. So we're gonna play very few red lands here. I think we need to play five, including the Forge, to support the Chandra's Fury, Chandra's Ignition. I wish we had that enchantment. There's another Enshrouding Mist. Playing three of them. Okay, we definitely have Healing Hands. In the sideboard, I might main deck one of them. We're gonna play 17 land and the sword. Okay, so we need to cut three cards. We have 16 creatures. Which one is the worst among Yoked Ox and Bellows Lizard? I think it's Yoked Ox that's the worst. Can we really play three Enshrouding Mists? I'm going to cut Yoked Ox. And I think empty Oramancers are better than Bellows Lizard. But we're really going bottom of the barrel creatures here. But this is 15 creatures. Still need to cut two cards. And I think it's healing hands, of course. So one more card. What the curve. Uh, I am inclined to go 18 land here. But I'm not going to. 
I'm not cutting a creature. So what is there to cut? There are three Enshrouding Mists, a Swift Reckoning, two Flares, Sword, Suppression Bonds. What about Heavy Infantry? I think it's better than Oromancer. So it stays in. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna cut the shrouding mist. This is just. I think that's correct. Might bring it in if people have a lot of more people are really fast. I'm gonna bring it in over heavy infantry. But my big problem here, of course, will be getting overrun. So I'm really not the fast deck. Unless I get the Lieutenant Free Blade start. Twelve three. I'm going eleven four. Actually, Bellows Lizard is horrible because we don't we are not reliably having red mana at the start, so I'm gonna play Yoke Dox over it. And there are like some fringe cases here. We can sort of the enemies, the yoke docks. We can enshrouding mist it. We can anoint it. And of course, it will keep us alive early. So I think this is my deck. Not what I wanted, really, but uh, very similar to last week's deck, except even more white. So this is it, people. That's what we're gonna play. Welcome to Magic Gathering Strat, I'm Dan. Last week I 3 0 with white red and it wasn't the best build. Here I have a very slow white red build. So is it that slow? I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 creatures costing 2 or less. And 3 removal spells costing 3 or less. So maybe it's fine. I have 15 creatures and my, my best creatures are super good. And then we have these Aura Mancers, the Heavy Infantry and the Joke Dogs. Bottom of the barrel, four of them. And that Maturing Bully doesn't look too good either. The alternative here would be putting an, an, another Enshrouding Mist, but Enshrouding Mist gets worse when you have fewer creatures and I really want to stick with the 15 creature rule. Uh, it's time to begin Origins Drafts. I noticed now when I looked back at my triumph last week, it has very few views. I think you guys want to see Battle for Sendikar, so next week I'm gonna do Battle for Sendikar uh, sealed again. And if we hit the Patreon goal, uh, where I do drafts every week, I will do Battle for Seneca drafts. So please support us at patreon.com slash magicgatheringstrat. Because now I'm doing a limited video every week because of the Patreon. And if we hit that other goal, I will do a, a draft video every week. I'm keeping this. Got something to play on turn one. And turn two and turn three. That must be good. Yeah, those aura mancers. Top on free blade. No, I guess a land is pretty decent here. I'm just gonna attack with the... Oh, on the other hand, Fetid Imp doesn't do a whole lot. So maybe I should let it live. Unless he plays some pump or something, but it's just a 1-1 one, one flyer. Oh, he's the good old black-white deck. Bro9. 
I can handle that, I think. I took his Oromancers. That was sweet. And now I'm gonna play an Oromancer. And now I really want... Um, yeah, what do I want? I want uh, less lands, more stuff. He weight of the underworlded my guy to death. And that's of course pretty sweet. Oh, more lands. Uh, okay, now I'm gonna do it because I need to clear the way for... Oh, he fell for it. For the patron. Pretty obvious. Tornbow Archer, you should not play that card. Okay, so now I'm really reliant on his three cards not being... Um... Oh wow. Okay, I can actually get this... Uh... I can get this uh, Renown first. And I think that's what I'm going for. Feigning and Shrouding Mist here. This will also draw his removal so I can play the flyer. Which will be... which is maybe worse, actually. And I will wait around with the flyer. Suppression Bonds, that's uh, pretty bad for me. But it was his removal, so Suppression Bonds... It's in his deck. Oh yeah! I played 15 creatures to have things to boost with Anointer. So hopefully I draw a creature now. What are we waiting for? I have no idea what we're waiting for. Uh, there's a 2 pump free blade. I'm attacking. And I don't want to wait with the patron no more. Or should I? If he has another piece of removal, it will go on the free blade. But no, it's it's my clock is slowed by one turn. But the free blade actually hits for three. This is hard, but he could have discard as well. So I'm going patron. Okay, let's see your unholy hunger. No, the anointer! I Blight is a relevant card. An automaton, but uh, my... Dear patron is... Okay, he can do six damage now. But then the free blade got to rule supreme. He can do seven damage even. He doesn't have any cards in hand. So I think I need to close this out. So I'm gonna race him here. I think I have plenty of good draws for a race. And I am, of course, going to block the Thornbow Archer. And I'm going to take the damage from the others.
But it can't profitably attack with the others because then my free blade either is blocked or is renowned. He attacks. So maybe he drew a combo trick. Maybe he didn't. I still think I'm correct to raise here. Priest. No priest. Creature, please. Nice. Do I have spell mastery? No, I do not. I don't think I need my reckoning. Yep. He can still discard my stuff. Should I just take out the guardian? As I cannot cast it if he hits me with discard. But it is pretty good to have it against the bomb. I'm saving it. Oh. Wow. So I get to keep the regulars. He gets to keep one creature. The automaton. I'm gonna kill the automaton. So we will be on par. Why did he get to keep two creatures? He get to keep an artifact as well. So tragic arrogance. Pretty good. Now I need to draw business once again, but I do draw business. And is this a race I could win? He has a four turn clock and I have a six turn clock unless I can prowess my way to victory. So I'm going to block here. As I could not raise him and he doesn't have anything else. Oh, he does. And even, but I can top that. I have stuff like that too. That I draw the battlefield for it. So I think Tragic Arrogance got this, but I didn't feel outpowered. Should I put Healing Hands in the deck? He renounced, and now I'm on a three turn clock. Nothing else. <laughs> that kind of works. And now a shrouding mist would be brilliant, of course. For him as well, but uh, I am blocking here. Forcing him to have a trick. And he does, he has Touch of Moonglove. And this is one of the corner cases where it actually works. Moonglove. The Moonglove has touched him. And I lose two life. Pretty bad. All right. And in the end, he has drawn seven lands. I have drawn ten. So, yeah. And he got a nice trade with Tragic Arrogance. It all comes down to card advantage here. Chandra's Ignition. 
or a flare. But I don't draw any of that. So I'm O1. Okay, against his deck. Anointer is my only one toughness creature. I have plenty of stuff to deal with his deck. Right? Didn't see any boring artifacts. I don't need smash. He isn't super fast, so maybe I could risk bringing in healing hands instead of the aura mancers. But the aura mancers did work. So do I really want to go lower on creatures? I lost because of my lack of creatures. And he isn't super aggressive, so healing hands life doesn't matter a whole lot. I'm gonna play as is. Look at this. This is tough. If I draw one land of any kind, there's still nothing I can cast. But it's probably a plains. But I need to draw two lands to play anything more impressive than the joke dox. But joke dox could keep me alive here. It's pretty bad against tragic arrogance though. I am going to mulligan this. I think it's borderline. I am on the draw. No, I'm mulliganing. Wow. Okay, here I have the free blade and the flare if I draw a land. Is this something you can keep maybe with the new mulligan rule? Because I get two chance, three chances to draw the second land. So I am going to keep this. Throw away anything that's not a land. I have two four drops in my hand. But one of them is super good. I'm going to keep it. Thinking that this is something you can do with the new mulligan rule. Three chances to draw land means that I have to hit 17 out of 33 times 16 uh, out of 33 times 15 out of 33. Not to find the land. And that is quite unlikely. So this is a keep. But that also relies on the Celestial Flare and the Free Blade being able. He mulligans as well. I keep. He mulligans to five. Uh, so we throw this to the bottom. He throws a card on the bottom. Uh, oh, wait a minute, I'm playing first. What the hell am I talking about? Okay, this reduces my chance, but still it's about 75% to draw a land on these two turns. So I still think it's correct. But of course, it's less correct. Okay, let's get results oriented. Please don't have stops in upkeep if you have nothing to do. Oh yeah, it was correct. <laughs> Flying by the seats of my pants. So what do you say in English? I'm not a native English speaker. I am from Sweden. You could probably hear that. He has a throwing knife. It's crap. And I get to beat him up. And this is, of course, really good. So now I can hit him for a turn. I can also flare the blockers. No! Maybe I should take out Anointer. Maybe if I see that he has two Eye Blight Assassin, I'm gonna take out Anointer. Okay, now I deserve a land, I feel, but I still want to play the Celestial Flare over the Oromancer. Or do I? 
Wow. Okay, here we go. Really riding on the Topan Freeblade. So if he gets weight of the underworld now, I'm in trouble. Celestial Flare feels super good here. He's equipping the throwing knife. And I'm attacking. And Celestial Flare, does it work? But now I am falling way behind on mana. So now we can play something that could successfully block, such as Guardian Automaton. Still, my hand is going to be fantastic when I start drawing lands. Uh, Oramancer then. How can he not play anything? Surely he has something now. He can have Hyxis. But I haven't seen it yet, so I'm not gonna not attack here. God damn it, why am I always right? And of course this is horrible. Still, I'm pretty close to getting the Irregulars into play. Tragic Arrogance, Suppression Bonds, Weight of the Underworld is just that there's weight. And now I have a 6 for attacking me. Still think I was correct to cast the Celestial Flare on his creature because um, that was an out for me to win. He's down to one card. And if that can't remove the regulars, they are just going to win here. And then they're gonna strangle my mana. Still has two cards though. Okay, so I guess I'm just tapping everybody before his attack phase. Have a stop in begin, begin combat. And then I have a three turn clock. Tap you. Tap you. Mr. Husk. That's interesting. Sword of the Animist. That's not going to be a thing. Will he really sacrifice a creature here? Of course he will. He will sacrifice the, the Blood Knight and then still have the 6-4. So I'm gonna take a ton of damage. I can't really block anything. So maybe I have to get Renowned here. 
play an Acroan Sergeant. Then he attacks and he can do 8 damage and I lose. I really needed a 6 land. Is there a line that can work? I want to lose the match here, so I have plenty of time to think about this. Macron Sergeant is a horrible blocker. What if I just attack? It dies and then the other guys have to do the blocking. Uh, Amprin Tactician can block the knight. So they both die, but the knight is going to be sacrificed. And nobody can block, so I'm gonna take six damage. And then I'm gonna play something with two toughness. You can still get through with the throwing knife. I am screwed, I think. And a Crown Sergeant is the only creature I can play. But, though, but if I attack, I tap the Nantuko Husk. And then I tap uh, Hyksos on the next turn. Then I take. No, I, he still sacrifices Hyksos and do 8 damage, so that doesn't work. And if I just block the knight, tapping the two other creatures, I have a horrible situation in my hand, having traded the irregulars for the knight. I just need one more mana to rule this match. But I think I am doomed here. And maybe it was my aggressive keeping that killed me. Okay, I'm gonna go for letting him screw up. And just let Hyksus attack, block him and leave him with the two other creatures. That's what I'm gonna do. So block and kill Hyksus. And then my guys could work it through. That took a long time to reason to get to by reasoning. But that's the line. Let Hyksus attack, block him, kill him. Because that's the best trade I can get. And then try to survive with the uh, tactician next turn. Blocking the blood knight. Yeah, that's the line. And if he doesn't want to trade with Hyksus, he can... Uh, I can find another land and win the game. That's the plan. I think it's the best plan here. Please let me know if you can think of a better one. He's at 15 life, so doing damage to him has no purpose in itself. And boy would Enshrouding Mist be good here. Okay, so I'm tapping the Blood Knight and the Husk because I don't want to trade with them. And of course, Touch of Moon Glove doesn't save him here, right? I block. We trade. 
Okay, I got what I wanted. Now I just have to live somehow. Oh, Jesus Christ. Defeated by Macabre Walls. Uh, I'm sure mist comes one turn too late. My blood assassin doesn't matter here. It looks like it matters, but it doesn't. You may sacrifice, but he will of course not sacrifice now. I block. He can still do six. He can't be sacrificed to do damage to a player, can it? He could, so he could have won there. He could just have sacrificed, he could have done damage to me, sacrificed the others. I don't happen to have a target for that, don't, do I? No. He has Hyksus, but Hyksus doesn't... Of course, a Quran sergeant just die. everybody just dies. So I'm playing Oramancer. And Sword of the Animist. And Oramancer's body is still relevant. Being able to one for one with any of his cards. Fighting for my life here and I can't do it too slowly. Because I'm behind on the clock now after my... No, I am not. Wow. After my extremely long reasoning. Okay, and of course there's always Hyksus now. So we just have to make sure that we can block Hyksus next turn. So I'm, yeah, that didn't work. I'm blocking the husk. So he has to sacrifice the eyeblight assassin and I take no damage. But of course, here comes Hyksus. And I have to block him. And then he has sacrifices Hyksus to the so that will be my death. And I don't think there's a way out of it. Unless he messes things up terribly. Macaber walls for the win. Okay, now we shall see if the 6222s are indeed Swiss or if I am now eliminated. Okay, got to block Kixus, otherwise I die and I still die. Unless he does something terribly wrong and he did! Wow, how can I be alive? Even though it doesn't help. Yeah, I'm just dead. 
So now my only hope is that his mom disconnects his internet cable. But I'm gonna bring Nantuko Husk with me to the realm of the dead. O2! And I seem to be still in! Okay, go back to the drafting video, tell me what I should have drafted. Thank you for watching. Welcome to Magic Gathering Strat. I'll tell you what, I'm really happy about how the 622 drafts work. Because I thought they worked like the 4322 drafts. But now we get an extra pack and we get Swiss play. That's awesome. Uh, because I lost. So I will now take my revenge. Here we go, people. This is serious business. I'm gonna stand up. This is the sound of my awesome table. Okay, I want to play first. Pussel, hi, good luck to you. So now I need to win two straight to make it. Look at that thing. That's not, never gonna be able to cast. I am keeping it. I am never going to be able to cast it, is the proper English. So I'm gonna play Anointer of Champions and then do nothing until turn four. That's what I'm gonna do. Because that's what real men does. God, my English is just getting worse and worse, the more videos I make. I did not expect that. Oh, it's beat down. It's beat down, people. It's the 20 turn clock in effect. Oh, Freeblade, where are you? And now I just draw lands. That's horrible. Yes, is there any point of putting the foundry out there? It's just alerting him of the danger. Please don't play Eye Blight Assassin. That will make me cry. Like a little girl. Like this. Oh <laughs> no, Eye Blight Assassin killed Anointer. But he is not coming. And the Anointer gets to do damage again. Wow, how many planes are there in my deck? Well, I know how many planes there are in my deck. There are 11. Okay, I think I need to play this next turn. I could play turn 6 as well. Now, the clock is speeding up. <laughs> it's the return centaur and he can't stop me. I think his deck looks like crap, actually. And now we can equip the Sword of the Animist. And that is just going to be really good, because then we can get the red mana. Which we should then have played this turn. Yes, please. Oh, it comes into play! That's crazy! Okay, let's see if he blocks or not. He didn't block, so I pump him. And next turn we do the foundry trick. Please give me one... No, Anointer, but Guardian is safe. A Guardian is dead. And this is not going to go well. Oh, however, Sword will still be on a Foundry token. But I'm going down to 21. Foundry seems super strong here. Uh, though heavy infantry is pretty good as well. I think getting in the hits 
is more important. Then I can actually play this next turn anyway. So this is what we do. At the end of his turn, we sacrifice the foundry. Black red. I'm really surprised they didn't have anything to play now. Oh, I cast it at the end of combat and not at the end of his turn. That's embarrassing. Okay, I will still be able to enshrouding mist uh, the heavy infantry, which will enable it to win the fight. Yes. Uh, my math is off. But he will still be able to block the Centaur. And then worst case, he is a pretty nice target for the ignition. So I guess we'll take one hit from the prickle boar. And we are very close to getting two for one, of course, by uh, if he has anything to remove the heavy infantry. We're still going to go for it, though. We have a pretty decent clock here. And holy hungers, the one one. And this doesn't help against that. So I guess this guy still attacks. And we can play Sergeant. Put Sword of the Animist somewhere. On the Sergeant. There's a Cobble Brute. And he does it attack. Interesting. So now if I attack with the crew and sergeant. I'm gonna kill something, but I need the Enshrouding Mist. So I'm gonna move the sword to the 1-1. One, one and keep hacking away. And Chandra's Ignition just kills everything here. Maybe that's the line you should take. But I feel it is... Oh, I actually don't have a four power creature. I could get it with Sword of the Animist. Almost no lands left in the deck. That must be good. So I blocked the first striker with Heavy Infantry and I blocked the Cobble Brute with a Crown Sergeant. I should have moved the Sword of the Animist back, but I wanted him to attack. Okay, let's see if we get two for one. That didn't happen. 
So that worked nicely. And he just concedes to my overwhelming power. Okay, black, red, reject cards. Reeve Soul, Marauder, Hunger. So we just need plenty of creatures. He can't deal with artifacts, but Sidearm is so weak. Uh, we didn't see any artifacts on his side, I think we're just playing as is. He didn't seem very fast either, so I don't think Healing Hands is the thing. Tell me if I should have played Shandor's Vision. I have never played with the card, and I think it might have some play to it. Might be tricky. The famous five lands, two spells hand, and I always keep that pretty much, especially if I have a three and a five drop like this. So I might now be overrun. I wouldn't keep it against a super fast white red deck, but I'm gonna keep it against his deck. And it might be a mistake. No dangerous two drop, which is fantastic. Why do I have a stop in end combat? That's what's confusing me. Okay, but I need that for Celestial Flare, so I'm gonna keep it. But I should remove it. Now he should really have something. Wow, he has the same quality of deck as I have. No quality. Comes the Avon. Plenty of interesting stuff to do next turn. But I think the Avon will die given what we have seen from his deck. It sure does. Okay, we should expect like Act of Treasons and stuff. I'm not too fond of that deck. I don't think it is supported very well in this format. I should have played the planes there. Now I'm giving away Celestial Flare pretty much. Skyrick a giant. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna keep up and Shrouding Mist. So I'm not gonna play the Heavy Infantry here. I'm gonna play the Celestial Flare on the Giant. I might play that thing though. And equip it for an excellent blocker. <laughs> Such a good blocker. He can block Skyraker Giant all day. Uh, Yoke Talks becomes a lot better with Sword of the Animist, of course, but of course, any creature becomes much better with Sword of the Animist. Yeah, if I equip it now, I can attack at the land next turn, do the heavy infantry and shrouding mist trick. So I think that's correct. He still has four cards, so there's plenty of stuff to do. Actually, Act of Treasoning Yoke Dogs now is kind of fun. Here comes a Ram Roller. Oh. 
Meaning that I can then attack and get rid of the ram roller. But the ram roller is just gonna die to the heavy infantry. Oh, you know what? I just tap, I play this, tap the sky rated giant. And then I can attack. Safely. Look at the synergies. Yes. I need a play insert. Looking good. And now I'll just block and kill the ram roller. He acts of treasons, but that's not too dangerous, is it? He should have acted of treason, the sort of the animistic creature. Because this is just gonna do a ton of damage to me this turn. It's uh, nine, but it will not change the board too much. I can now even, no, I can't. Oh, yikes. That was better. He did get the combo. I still think the deck is not supported. Uh, so now I have to use the Enshrouding Mist here. To get my land next turn. I do want that land. I think I can win this just by drawing stuff. So I play Amprint Tactician. He's a decent blocker for the... Oh, I can block the Ram Roller next turn. And I go get my land. That's what I want. Get those lands out of the deck. And now my stop at the end of combat will work extremely good because if he attacks with both creatures, I will get them both. Now I will only get Ram Roller. But I think that's good enough. And I don't think I can take six damage here. He still has three cards though. And now taking four to get the card out of the yoked ox is not good. So I'm going to have to block here. And if you can deal with the yoked ox now. I'm in a world of hurt. Here comes Reed's soul. No, read the bones. Well, that's pretty bad for me. But imagine if I draw Kidion now, uh, the Kidion's regulars. That will be sweet. Mr. Husk. Okay, I don't have many lands left in the deck, so. Something has to give. And this is of course a pretty strong card. Should I now make it a 5-5? Then I can't block the Sky Raker Giant. But then I'll block the, the Husk. Really setting myself up for an act of treason now. Now act of treason will be devastating. And it's the game, right? Yeah. Okay, I still think the deck is not supported enough. But this guy, if you're the only drafter, maybe it works. <laughs> 
Okay, so we know what he's doing. Uh, Victor. Uh, yes. Okay, so we can destroy the ram roller, that's just one artifact. And he can't, the patron was just the guy he could abuse. I think I'm still playing the best list. What about the tutus? Well, they were there. Guys like Maroa there, yeah, we still need the, all the creatures. I'm gonna make no change. So let's crush him like we did first time. We did take a mulligan this time. Okay, I don't want to lose this. I want to play first. Got the matering bully, got the ox. Yeah. <sighs> Stupid ox. Maybe I should have replaced ox with the healing hands. But Ox did a lot of defensive work. Now a tree drop and things would really be going well. Didn't I have a suppression bonds? I haven't seen it all game. There is a shrouding mist that might come in handy next turn. Yeah, I took a Reeve Soul to the face. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna attack. Just kidding. Here comes the all powerful tree drop. Still, I'm pretty happy to deploy a creature here. Now we need to draw land, land. Doctor Engineer. And we might get him now with a shrouding mist. But there's the lieutenant. So we really need a shrouding mist to get through the top there engineer next turn. And that's the line we're gonna choose. Missing the land drop here, not fun. But we're not in any danger, are we? Mr. Centaur, we can't get through Mr. Centaur with Enshrouding Mist. So we fail to get the value out of... out of Enshrouding Mist. And getting automaton through by killing the centaur. Who oh, just milled me? That's interesting as it has zero effect. Another centaur. So now I can double block the automaton. Do I still want to get rid of one centaur? Oh, look at that. So we need to get Guardian Automaton to four power. And then play the Chandra's Ignition. Killing everything. Oh, we can't cast it yet, so... 
Nothing fancy here. But we are really going for the board wipe. And that's what we are going for. And now it's all about finding this fifth land. Act of Treason isn't very good now. Dragon Fodders. Okay, now we can do three to everything, but we need to do... We need another land. And we need not to be blown up by an instant. We know about hunger, but that's what we know. He can fire a conclusion th something. So we really want him tapped out as well. Is this feasible? He has fire conclusion ready here. So we got to play around that. How do we do that? Well, at some point doing two or doing, doing two to everything with Oramancer. That's not any good. So we will have to wait. But we know he can act of treason, so we can't go below like 10, I say. And he's never going to tap out, so fire conclusion is definitely something we have to fear. Double and shrouding mist enables it. That's five power. Okay, I think we still wait. We can now Swift Reckoning. We have... Yeah, we do have Spell Mastery. So we can cast it as an instant. But how the hell do we get to 5 power? So I'm just gonna Swift Reckoning the Ember Maw. But this, deck, this game is definitely running away from us. It's Act of Treasoning the Automaton, so it's just gonna do one giant attack here. But I guess that's pretty good. Here they come, all of them. We kill the Hellion. They're just crap. But they do a ton of damage. So now we are going to do three damage to everything. And be able to protect it with Enshrouding Mist with the Guardian Automaton next turn. So we should just make sure that the guys that survive three damage die. No, he will kill the Automaton. But then we'll have the fiery conclusion. So I think I'm blocking like this. Oh, we are not in block for faces. Block. 
and then double block the 2-4. That feels super bad. But then we get rid of that. Kill off everything. He can just do 5 damage to us next turn. How much damage do we take? We take 4, 7. It's too much. Yeah, I'm stressed by time now and I shouldn't be. I think I did something wrong here. So if we now enshrouding mist the lieutenant, he will fiery conclude, but then I will take less damage. So I'm going to do that. Leaving me with nothing to cast Chandra's ignition on. Then I will be at 7. Yeah, as predicted. And then his guy doesn't die. No, I take only 4. Yeah, that wasn't the best. Kills him. That's uh, that's probably not correct. Because now we have this guy. Who can then not wipe his entire board, but actually won't be able to stop this at all. Especially if he has a removal spell now. <clears throat> he has 8 power on the board. So I'm gonna take 6 here. And he has it. So now I'm dead. That's it. Act of Treason for the win again. Black Red Sacrifice came back to take its revenge on me. So I didn't see this deck this time. Maybe I did last time. So, well, uh, Chandra's Ignition, I might have misplayed it, but I'm not too, too enormoured by it. Okay, O2, yay, back to the sealed decks. Thank you for watching. I do have four boosters left, but when you get this kind of result in draft, I just hate draft. Uh, I paid $40, I got one and a half dollar in value back. So it's a catastrophe. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, it really helps us out. You can find us on Twitter at MagicGathStrat, Facebook slash MagicGatheringStrat, or on the web MagicGatheringStrat.com. There you can find articles and free prize-supported leagues. This is all brought to you by our Patreons and CardHoarder.com. If you enjoy this content, please consider supporting us at Patreon.com slash MagicGatheringStrat.